Inside the $5 billion Apple headquarters. Many agree that the legacy of Steve Jobs is undeniably great, and that he is one of the most iconic figures who influenced the general public's familiarity with the latest developments in technology. But is it all so unequivocal? Let's find out. I think no one will argue that Apple products are really high quality and almost innovative. Almost. To be honest, there was no gadget revolution when the company entered the market. Smartphones and other devices in one form or another already existed, so Steve Jobs can be called a great rethinker, but by no means an innovator. A great emphasis in the company's strategy is placed on the premium nature of the devices. I repeat, the quality of the product is not in question, as evidenced by even the names themselves. There is the iPhone, and then there are all the other smartphones although in principle, it is a device of the same type. About the premium, of course, speak in prices, which are often dictated solely by marketing, rather than the real value of the device, although admittedly, this sin many manufacturers. And of course, almost every year the company pleases fans with new versions of its devices, which again, are not distinguished by anything relatively new, but give the company the opportunity to steadily reach super profits. According to Forbes magazine, the company posted a record $111.4 billion in revenue in quarter 4, 2020. The company's net income also rose to $28.75 billion compared to $22.23 billion in quarter 4, 2019. Apple's fan base isn't named by accident. After all, love for the company is almost comparable to religious awe, and people are willing to sleep under the store waiting for an opportunity to buy a new model of iPhone at a price of $1,000 plus dollars. Jokes about selling a kidney to buy an iPhone are still walking on the expanses of the internet. All this excitement was undoubtedly generated by the founder, Steve Jobs. He wanted to create a unique brand and he succeeded perfectly. After all, it was he who always talked about his legacy, which is why his figure was shrouded in a halo of mystery. Until now, his office is untouched and keeps all his things in the form in which Jobs himself left them. The current head of the company, Tim Cook, sometimes comes to his office for solitude and reflection. One of the main milestones in his legacy, Steve Jobs considered the creation of a unique complex for his company, where everyone could feel most comfortable and work for fun, the result of which was Apple Park, which became a unique example of the original modern architecture and landscape design. Information about Apple Park first appeared back in 2006, however construction only began in 2014 after the death of the head of the company, who never managed to see his project implemented. The construction took about four years and cost the company about $5 billion, making it one of the most expensive buildings in the world. The campus was originally valued at about half a billion dollars, but the site alone cost the company $160 million, which already indicated that the original cost was clearly understated. In 2011, Apple Park's value was revised to just under $3 billion. Overall, the campus cost Apple a whopping $5 million, unthinkable for a company worth more than $2 trillion. By comparison, the tallest building in the world, the Burj Khalifa Tower, cost at least 2.5 times less than Apple's grandiose project. Steve's vision is reflected all around us at Apple Park. He would have loved it here. It's where he invented the house and inspired Apple's future innovations, is how current CEO Tim Cook characterized the project. Let's take a walk through this structure and see what's so special about it. The site itself is 176 acres of land and is located in Cupertino, California. Let's start with the main campus building, a futuristic building that resembles a spaceship. This part of the complex is the building itself, where the office is located directly. The building is capable of holding more than 12 million employees, and it takes about 15 minutes to drive the entire circle. I guess you wouldn't mind walking around with a spectacular view of the street, provided by curved glass panels 36 to 47 feet long. The presence of these panels allows for a seamless and panoramic view of the outdoor landscape. In fact, the building was designed to be as uncluttered as possible and encouraged people to come together for productive work. However, according to Apple Explained, many employees were unhappy with the excessive open space in which they could not have privacy and focus. Also, the large number of glass doors and surfaces literally on opening day led to several injuries to workers who, if they hesitated, bumped into the glass doors. When building the office center, the company wanted to create an optimal working environment for people. The company's management decided to remove thresholds from all doorways on campus, so the employees would not have to shift their attention to stepping over them and be distracted from thinking about work. Despite long persuasions from construction workers to abandon the idea, the company did not change its mind 
and continue to optimize working conditions for its employees. The building also features Cafe Max, a unique 58,000 square foot restaurant where employees can gather together and socialize during breaks. Cafe Max is accessed from the open green courtyard by four-story sliding doors, titled the largest sliding glass doors in the world. The restaurant even has its own patented apple pizza box that prevents the pizza crust from getting soggy. The restaurant's staff responsibly states that they have enough food to feed up to 15,000 people every meal. Apple likes to encourage its employees to adopt a healthy lifestyle. To that end, Apple Park has 3.2 kilometers of walking and running paths, as well as 1,000 bicycles that can be used freely. The building also has a gym, a wellness center, and several basketball courts and tennis courts. The Apple Center's 100,000 square foot fitness center has locker rooms, showers, laundry facilities, group workout rooms, and a two-story yoga studio. The yoga studio is lined with a special stone from a quarry that Steve Jobs chose in Kansas and carefully crafted to make the room look similar in style to his favorite hotel in Yosemite. In addition, Jobs insisted that trees cut exclusively in the winter season, when the concentration of sap in the wood is minimal, were used in the construction which increases its durability. Apple's designers went to great lengths to make sure the building blended in with the local landscape design. They did this by planting over 9,000 trees under the supervision of David Miffley in charge of the Stanford campus, and allowing the buildings to occupy about 20% of the 176 acres. It was Steve Jobs' wish that Apple Park would look more like a preserve. It's important to note that all of the buildings at Apple Park are very environmentally friendly. The Circle Building is home to one of the largest rooftop solar farms generating up to 17 megawatts of electricity, enough to meet up to 75% of the campus's energy needs during peak hours. The rest of the campus's needs are met by local fuel cells powered by biofuels or natural gas. The main building does not use traditional heating or cooling nine months of the year, instead using a natural ventilation system. Among other things, they also use low-energy LEDs. The building is reliably protected against earthquakes by a special installation of 692 stainless steel plates allowing the building to shift up to four feet in any direction without any structural damage. Looking even deeper, you'll find a spacious two-story parking lot with domed ceilings finished in reflective white tiles. A whole system of built-in traffic lights perfectly regulates car traffic in the parking lot. In addition, the road network is intentionally hidden from view, so that the green areas enjoy their unaffected by human technology view. Thanks to this, Apple was able not to disturb the landscape and preserve as much greenery on the territory as possible. You'll also find the impressive Steve Jobs Theater. To get to the 1,000-seat auditorium, you can use a 42-foot elevator made of chemically hardened glass. The elevator is considered the largest freestanding glass elevator on Earth and rotates as it moves up or down. Step away from the main building and you'll find two research and development centers, a nursing clinic, and the visitor center, the only building on campus where visitors can enter without a pass. The visitor center is under one roof but consists of four separate parts, a 10,000-square-foot Apple store, a 2,000-square-foot cafe, and a dedicated augmented reality area. Apple has also added a perfectly round artificial pond, which together with the main building forms a single composition. You'll also see a rainbow structure at the head of the rectangular field, designed by former Apple chief designer Jonathan Ive. The structure is often used as a stage for speakers and performers, 